Hello everybody, this is your first video for Algebra 2. We're going to be reviewing the main things for lines that you're going to need to know for this year. All of it you learn in Algebra 1, but this is a quick refresh of everything. We're going to first start with the three forms of a line. So in your notebook, you're going to, going to want to go to the first page, um, write everything down that I'm writing down here, any examples, any sketches of graphs that I do. So when we talk about the three forms of a line, there's one form that you all are most familiar with, and it's because you use it the most, and it's the slope-intercept form. That is usually your go-to if you're given a choice. That's y equals mx plus b. Remember, b is your y-intercept. Whenever you plot it, you start with that first. You anchor it down on the y-axis. And then m here is the slope. And remember, slope is change in y over change in x. The way you plot it is you usually think rise over run. And the little slope formula is y2 minus y1 equals x2 minus x1. Now remember, there are four different kinds of slope here. You could have a positive slope. You could have a negative slope. And there's also these two special cases which people mix up the most. They mix up whether it's zero slope, no slope, undefined slope, etc. So let's say I have this line here, and I'm going to go ahead and pick two ordered pairs on it. I just put it on this graph here so you can actually see some ordered pairs. I'm just picked 1, 3, 4, 3. You can really pick any ordered pairs that you want. This is for a horizontal line. Let's go ahead and do the slope. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this one y2 and y1. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's 0 over 3. One thing that people mix up is 0 is in the numerator, and you're dividing it by anything, or dividing 0 by anything. That's going to be 0. So this is a 0 slope line. And this line actually right here would be the equation y equals 3. Horizontal lines are always y equals a number. The slope is 0, so there's no mx part. The other part is this red one here. So I drew this red line here, again, on the coordinate grid. And I'm going to find the slope here, just so you can see again why the slope is what it is. If I do, let's call this one y2 here, 3 minus 6 over negative 7 minus negative 7. That's negative 3 divided by minus a negative plus 0. Negative 3 divided by 0 is undefined. So don't say there is no slope. It's an undefined slope. So this is m is 0. This is m doesn't exist because it would involve dividing by 0. We can't divide by 0 in math. The next type of form of a line is the point slope form. This is the one that you've seen before, but people usually shy away from it. It's y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Uh, just realize that this comes directly from the slope formula. So here's the slope formula that we all know and love. If I were to solve for y2 minus y1, and I wanted to isolate that, I would multiply each side by the denominator to get rid of it, and you have to do it to both sides, remember? So now I'm left with this y2 minus y1 equals m x2 minus x1, which is exactly this. You just don't have the 2s there. Now, whenever we use point-slope form, this is used best when we're given a point and a slope. That's why it's called point-slope form. Point and a slope, because you literally just plug the slope in for m, plug the point in for x1, y1, and then you're good to go. Now, one thing here is you plug into x1, y1 and we don't ever plug anything in so don't plug into x or y so whenever i say plug into x1 y1 you plug numbers into here and here and then your slope goes right there you never plug anything in for this x or this y they have to stay there or else you wouldn't end up with an equation of a line i'm going to go ahead and do one example both ways I'm only going to do it once both ways, and from then on it can really be your choice, unless I specifically tell you to do one of the ways. Let's do slope-intercept form first. This type of example, I'm giving you a slope, so you know m, and I'm giving you a point x, y. So if I do slope-intercept form, I'm going to plug into mx plus b. Now the thing is here, remember, is you're given an x, y, you're given an m. If you're doing slope-intercept, you have to find the b first. 
So y equals m x plus b, y equals negative 4 plus b. I'm going to add 4 to each side. 10 is b. So now that you have m and you have b, you can plug in and you have the equation of a line. So that's one way. If I'm going to do point slope form, you're going to plug right into here, and you're going to find that you don't actually have to find b. It's just going to fall out whenever you do the distributing. So y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. y minus 6 equals 4 x plus 1. Now you technically could stop right here and this is the equation of a line. The only thing is it doesn't look like this yet and the reason you guys like this way better is it's so easy to plot a line when it's in this form because you have the y-intercept and the slope and we are going to plot it in just a second. It's really easy to get there. You just have to distribute the 4. So 4x four plus 4, add the 6 and then you have the same thing. But you, it is acceptable to stop right here. It just makes it hard to graph. If you're going to graph it, you're going to want to go all the way to here. So if I'm going to graph this thing, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, oops, 10. Now it's going to be a pain to plot this thing if I'm going to the right. I could go 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. Remember, this is your slope 4 over 1 rise over run. It's going to be going up because my slope's positive. Instead of going up for right one, I could go one, two, three, four, down for left one. Three, four, left one. And that continues a steep upward trend. And you can continue graphing it like that. So that is one example done both ways. So pause for a minute and make sure you have this example written down. I'm going to do one more example. This time, instead of giving a slope and a point, I'm going to give you two points. These are the two points we're going to go through. 6, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6, 1 and negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Negative 8. So it's going to look something like this. We're anticipating a positive slope because it's going upwards. Well, first of all, we have to find the slope. So let's do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Again, you could have gone the other way. You could have done 1 minus negative 8 over 6 minus negative 3. It really doesn't matter how you do it, as long as you go from left to right or right to left for both of them. So 1 minus negative 8 is 9. 6 minus negative 3 is 9. 9 over 9 is 1. If you'd done it this way, you would have gotten negative 9 over negative 9 which is also 1. So regardless, the slope is 1. You have to find slope first because you can't plug into either equation without the slope. So I have slope intercept form. I have point slope form. If you want to go ahead and do this one on your own and pause the video and skip forward, you can. Or if you want to watch along, you can do that as well. Now, it doesn't matter what point you use here. I'm going to pick this point because it's positive. So it's always easier to deal with positive numbers than negative. So y equals m x plus b, 1 equals 6 plus b, minus 6, negative 5 is b. And that makes sense because it looks like the y-intercept is about negative 5 here from my quick sketch. So y equals m, x plus b. You don't have to put the 1 here, but you definitely can. If I use this one here, I would have y minus y1 equals m, x minus x1. So y minus 1 equals x minus 6. If you just add 1 quick, you would get the same exact thing. Again, distributing a 1 didn't do anything to this. So those are reviews of point slope and slope intercept form. So if you wanted to plot this more exactly, you would have a y intercept of 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. I was pretty close whenever I really quickly sketched it. Slope is 1, up 1, over 1, down 1, left 1 the whole way across. Okay, standard form. This is the only other one that you're going to need to know for this class. It's the only other form of a line that there is. Standard form you haven't seen as much of. Um, so the standard form of a line is ax plus by equals c. Standard form of a line is, the quickest way to graph it here, because you don't know your slope or your y-intercept, the best way is to plot the x and y intercepts and to find the x and y intercepts. The 
most often way you're going to see this is if you're solving systems of equations like elimination or substitution. That's when you probably encountered this the most. So pause the video for a minute and jot down just these little sentences here. I'm going to have you find out how you find the intercepts if you haven't done this before yet. When I say intercepts, I mean x-intercept and y-intercept. I don't know where y-intercept went here. So you're going to find both of those. There's one of each. And you're going to plot them, and you're going to connect them. So to find the x-intercept, first of all, just realize the x-intercept is where the graph crosses the x-axis. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So I'm going to show you a graph here. You don't have to sketch this down. Uh, you can just jot down your ordered pairs in the margin of your notebook, but you can sketch a quick if you want. So here I just graphed a bunch of random lines. What I want you to do first is to figure out how we find the x-intercept given a line in this form. I want you to pause the video for a moment and write down the ordered pairs of all the x-intercepts. So what I want you to do is, in the margin of your notebook somewhere, I want you to write the ordered pairs of these three or four x-intercepts, and I want you to notice something whenever you write their ordered pairs. So pause the video and just jot down those four ordered pairs quick. So hopefully you're back. What you should have noticed is that for the x-intercepts, Every single order pair has a zero for the y value, and that makes sense because you haven't moved up and down. So let's do the same thing now for the y-intercept. This is the y-axis, and the y-intercepts lie on here. So what I want you to do is pause the video and write the ordered pairs of your four y-intercepts, and you should notice something, and then we'll check in again. Now what you should have noticed for the y-intercepts whoops, is that for every single y-intercept, the ordered pair has a zero for the x value. And again, that makes sense because you haven't moved left or right at all whenever you plot these. So right here, these are the ordered pairs for your x. These are the ordered pairs for your y. So we're going to summarize quick to write down how you find the x and y-intercepts using that pattern there that we just noticed. This is where you can continue your notes here um, after we did that little graph thing. So to find the x-intercept, again, notice that for oops, the x-intercepts, all the y values were 0. So if you want to find an x-intercept, all you do is plug 0 in for y and solve for x. So plug 0 in for y and solve for x. So fill that out with me. To find the y-intercept, Right here, every single y-intercept had a 0 for an x value. So if you want to find the y-intercept, just plug 0 in for x and solve for y. So the exact opposite. If you ever forget that, just picture a graph and notice what you know, uh, what's going on with the order pairs for the x and y-intercepts. Okay, so that's enough for the lines. I'm going to do parallel perpendicular lines in another video. Just make sure you have all the notes written down for standard point slope and slope intercept form. See you later.